So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got another awesome guest from Superman and Lois. She is storming through the episodes and it's great to see more of her on screen. It's a wonderful Taylor book. Taylor, welcome to the show, my love. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. And I've got to say, um, seeing you grow on screen this season is absolutely awesome. But we'll get to that in a moment. But I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, the last two years have been quite, you know, sort of upsetting. And it's been quite, you know, negative in, in ways. But I just wanted to find out, you know, how you've kept, I don't know, positive and kept moving forwards over the last two years of the pandemic. I mean, luckily for me, I i mean, I've been really lucky. I've been able to work throughout the entire pandemic. So that's what's been keeping me sane. Um, I mean, as well as, you know, taking time to myself and trying to figure out who I am, like listening to music too, and just staying positive because I feel like when you're alone sometimes or, you know, in all the time, you can get really hard on yourself. So I'm trying to be nice to myself and kind and, you know, create new healthy habits. And I think that's helped. That is awesome. And when you said about music, for the fans out there, who are you listening to at the moment? Lately, The Kills. I just saw a concert. I just went to their concert recently too. And they were so amazing. So amazing. It was like best night of my life. What? Did you say The Kills or The Killers? The Kills. The Kills. Okay, I haven't heard of that. I'll have to uh, Spotify that. Really? Uh, yeah, I haven't. No, yeah. I, and do you know what? I used to DJ as a job as well during the just before the pandemic. So I'm quite shocked that I haven't heard of them. So it's always oh, great to discover new to music. It. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So um, your profession that you've chosen, I've got to say, is one of those professions where you could have found an easier one, to be honest. But, <laughs> but why acting? Why, why go down one of the routes that is the most competitive? I mean, to be honest, I don't think I really knew what I was getting myself into. I've been doing it since I was like four or five years old. Um, So it's been a long road, but you know, I didn't, I don't think I really understood what it was when I started out. I just enjoyed it and I was like, okay, this is fun. I want to do it. (laughs) (laughs) And I suppose starting out as a child actor, I suppose has got its advantages, I suppose, because you're learning an, uh, an earlier age, which is great. I mean, obviously, I mean, your profession comes with a lot of ups and downs, a lot of rejection, yeah. a lot of auditions. I mean, how have you learned to deal with, you know, those rejections at such a young age? I mean, I think because I started so young, part of the fun of it for me was going out to the auditions and just being there and doing it. Um, so I wasn't, you know, too heartbroken every time I didn't end up getting a job. So that, that was good for me. But because I've been doing it for so long, it's become like second nature. So, you know, you build a thick skin to the rejection and you're not going to get everything you want. Trust me. <laughs> I've been there. But, you know, you you just you learn and grow. Mm-hmm. And then when when starting out at such a young, young young age, you know, your your career so far is just fantastic. Looking looking at your IMDb, you know, it's really really impressive already, which is awesome. Um, have you got a plan in place, like a life goal, a place that you want to be in ten twenty years? I'm trying right now to live in the moment. I think sometimes, you know, when you make extremely big goals it can be a good thing and a bad thing bittersweet sort of you know um i don't want to ever be disappointed in myself because i've you know come so far so i just want to live in the moment and be happy and grateful for the things that i have now and stay positive towards the future positive and open is what i want to be that is awesome and when starting out as well you know we all have our own idols acting legends i mean who inspired you the most when when you were small or even now, you know, on, you know, in the industry? To be honest, when I started out, I was so young and I, the story of how I started out was my sister was put into it first, my older sister. So of course, me being younger than her, I wanted to do everything that she did. Um, So it was really her, honestly, that inspired me to start acting. So I guess I kind of owe my career to her in a little bit (laughs) of that sense. Um, But yeah. That's how I started out. Mm-hmm. 
that is really nice to hear because I've got an eight an eight year old daughter and a four year old daughter. Um, one one called Lois after Lois Lane, no and the other way. one is called Cara after Cara Danvers, Supergirl. That is so, so cool. Um, and it's really nice because the four year old looks up to uh, looks up to Lois, and it's quite nice because yeah. she always wants to do everything that she wants to do. Uh, but obviously, the <laughs> age gap does limit it a bit. But no, that's really oh, really know. nice to hear. I know my sister and I are two and a half years apart, so I would always want to do everything that she did. And my parents were like, you know, you're not the same age as her. I don't know if you knew this, but you can't do the same things. Oh, no, that's really awesome. So you owe your career to your sister. But if there was a, an acting legend that you could work with, um, who's your dream actor that you would love to work with on screen? Hmm, I remember when I think I was like, 12 or 13. I think that was the age where I was like, oh my God, I really look up to this person. Um, what was it that I watched? Maybe it was, it was all of like Angelina Jolie's early movies, like Foxfire, Hackers, like Girl Interrupted. And I was like, she really is awesome. Like she really goes into her characters and can change and like is sort of a chameleon, which is pretty cool. And I've always wanted to work with her. So maybe Angelina Jolie. You know what? It could happen, and I'm sure it will happen in the future. <laughs> and then we fast forward to, you know, now, and you're rocking it on screen in Superman and Lois. So first of all, congratulations on the renewal of season three, which Thank I think is so awesome. Well, a uh, that was on the show recently mentioned that filming is set to start in September time. It, it can't yes. come any sooner. We want season three. <laughs> I know we've got two episodes left. Uh, yes. One is tonight. Uh, obviously, this is going out tomorrow, so on Wednesday. So um, we would already have watched that episode. Um, but yeah, we, I can't. I can't. Well, I don't want the season to end. I really don't because it's, it's just bittersweet. It's like really exciting because it's you know we worked so hard for so long <laughs> over the pandemic. I think it took us like eight months. So it's it's like very nice and rewarding to finally see these episodes come out and have everybody know what's going on in the show and it's like oh my god these things are being revealed and finally we can talk about them mm. so it's really cool and i know there's been a few gaps between episodes and a lot of fans have been talking about that but the way i look at it it's worth wait waiting for you know oh, if you've got you. to wait a couple of weeks three weeks it's definitely worth waiting for so what attracted you to the role of natalie irons Oh my gosh, I gotta be honest with you. I did not know what role I was auditioning for. It was a fake name, fake names in the script, you know. The audition script had nothing to do with anything that we've done in the show so far. So it was that, it was just, I think I saw it and I was like, oh my God, films in Canada, super cool. I wanna go to Canada. So I did the audition and, you know, got the job. <laughs> Well, well, Wooly did mention that about the fake names. I think he had like Brad Smith or something like that on his side. <laughs> I think it was like Sharon. Sharon. Yeah, I could Sharon. see it. Yeah, Sharon. So <laughs> if you could talk us through exactly what you actually did for the audition, because, you know, it, it, it was such a secretive project. It really was because right, yeah. from Elseworlds, um, the rumours were that we were going to get a Superman and Lois. Uh, I've, I've mentioned this before. I met Tyler just after Elseworlds. And he was very good at keeping stuff secret. He really, really was. Really? <laughs> um, yeah. So if you could talk us through exactly what, what is involved in an audition for a show um, this big. It's sort of different, I think, the way that I went through my audition versus the way that other cast members went through their auditions. Because mine was in the middle of the pandemic. So it was a self-tape. I didn't go in and meet anyone or anything. Um, and I think it was... I think they were looking for someone pretty quick. So it was a self tape. And I think I heard back like a few days after and they were like, you know, they really want you for this part. Um, the thing is, there is an option for this part to become a series regular later on in this season. Is that mm. something that you would be interested in? And I was like, are you kidding me? Is that even a question? Yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> and that was that, to be honest. Mm. I mean, why do you think this show is so well received because you know when it got announced there's i mean the superman franchise is enormous it really is so to be part of that 
is must be so exciting. I mean, why do you think it's so well loved? I think it just does something different. It focuses honestly on family. And I feel like that's not really something that we've seen before as the main focus of a Superman series. Um, and I think people enjoy that. I mean, I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, it's very real. I mean, I've got to say, again, the writing. So a massive shout out oh, to the writers. The writers that- are absolutely amazing. Mm, and and the storylines, I think, are fantastic. I've mentioned it before. There's no such thing as, as as any small characters. Literally, each story is just fantastic in itself. And it is so grounded and so real. And you can sort of relate to every aspect of the show, which is great. Yeah. I love that about it. I love how grounded it is. And, I mean, the writers are absolutely amazing. I read the scripts and I'm like, oh, my God, this is great. I can't wait to see this. <laughs> and will I uh, mention that... When you actually went onto the set for the first first time, you and Wule never actually met before that because of COVID restrictions. Right. So you had to be, um, you know, in quarantine for two weeks and then you went yeah. onto set. What was that like actually meeting your on-screen dad, your on-screen father for the first time when you was actually shooting? To be honest, I feel like we just kind of clicked. It was the episode that... David Ramsey was directing Um, and it was just it was great I mean it was early in the morning like first scene up was the goodbye scene very first scene so it's like hi nice to meet you you know I'm Taylor okay and then it's goodbye I love you and like crying and just (laughs) it was kind of crazy I'm very glad we did it that way Um, but it was great we just kind of clicked and you know I feel like we work really well together and I love Wale he's like my favorite scene partner. I, I love him. I love working with him. And that was what my next question was. What's he like um, as an on-screen dad? <laughs> Amazing. Really, really funny and silly in between takes. And then I just feel like when the camera's on, we we just get it done. Mm. We get it done. And when you signed up, when you obviously auditioned and you had that call, did you realize that you were going to make so much of an impact going into season two? you know, when you actually joined the show? No, I didn't know anything, to be honest. What I knew was that I would be going for one episode and then I would be back for the finale. That's what I knew. (laughs) Um, And then, you know, finale happened. Didn't know anything until I got episode one script. And I think uh, Todd called me up at the beginning of season two and just gave me the basic sort of rundown of what was gonna happen this season. And I was like, okay, wow. Okay, so I didn't know that. That was like, that is a lot. That is a lot to tell me right now. And that must be an awesome feeling because obviously going in and expecting to be in for one episode and then all of a sudden, right. bam, you're on screen um, saving uh, Super Superman, which is awesome. I mean, how far in advance do you get to know what's in store for your character? When the episodes are available to everyone, that's when I know. <laughs> when the final draft comes out and I'm able to read it, that's what I know. And then I could be shooting like three days from then or like the next week, you know. So that's when I know. I just get the episodes when I get them and read them and I'm surprised. And do you get the script then run off to a dark room and literally read it while no one's around just in case and then do a little scream? (laughs) I do not. Maybe I should be more careful. (laughs) Honestly, wherever I am, if I'm, you know, eating or shopping, I will open it up right there and read the entire thing because I just can't wait. Mm, that's awesome and 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 we see your story arc uh just explode during season two from your relationship with lois uh to relationship with your dad uh what's been the biggest challenge for you playing natalie as an actor honestly i really love playing her i mean i love everything about her and the things that i get to do while playing her Um, I get to do like little soldering and like mechanic stuff, the perks of playing a character who's a genius. Um, I love everything about her. I think the most challenging thing would be all the emotional scenes. I think the writers just love to see me cry, (laughs) but um, not in a bad way. I I love the challenge and I, I like, you know, expressing her and trying to get her emotions right and everything. And you talk about the obviously the emotional scenes. We see some amazing acting from you. 
you you know with Lois and with your dad I mean how do you prepare for scenes like that from an actor's point of view I try my hardest to live in the moment with those scenes um because I think that makes it easier for me if I pretend that these things are actually happening to me and it becomes a little bit more believable um so I just you know pretend it's me I mean, do you, do, you, do you think it's harder for a, a younger actor to have scenes like that than an older actor? Because I suppose older actors can take, you know, experience from past life events to, to help them really? with their acting. So being a young actor, you know, I suppose it's even more difficult. So I think so. Yeah, it might be difficult, although I've seen pretty amazing young actors out there so they're obviously doing something right you know a lot of competition there for you but (laughs) that's awesome um and do you think we'll ever see natalie build you know more of a relationship with lois because it breaks my heart to see you know the way that you look at her knowing that it's not your mum. um but i'm wanting you to build a relationship because i think everyone needs a mum, uh that mum figure so Do you think we're gonna, think, gonna ever see that? I think eventually. I mean, I would want it to happen. That's something that I look forward to seeing and something that I hopefully want to happen. Um, I think it could be really good for Natalie. She has her father, of course, and you know he is such a huge part of her life, but I think there will always be a part of her that's missing her mom. And it's still, it's been a little bit, but it's still so fresh. Um, and seeing Lois all the time, it doesn't. It's not going to replace her mother, but I think it could help her heal. Mm, definitely, definitely. So fingers crossed. Season three, uh, we see that relate relationship <laughs> um, uh, blossom. Uh, so let's yeah. talk suits because how cool was it when you found out that you were going to don a suit um, and and be just like your on screen dad. It was so cool. When I when I first got the name of the character that I was playing, I went and searched up on Google and I couldn't find anything. I only found Natasha Irons. So I looked her up and I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. But I didn't want to get my hopes up. I was like, okay, I don't know, you know, <laughs> who I'm going to be playing. I don't want to get my hopes up and think that I'm going to play a superhero and whatnot. Um, and then season two, when Todd gave me the rundown of what was going to happen, he was like, oh, and then she's going to start building a suit. And I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't just <laughs> blow past that. What do you mean I'm getting a suit? And it was just amazing. For a second there, I thought that I had dreamed it up because, you know, I was waiting and watching and reading the episodes every every two weeks to see if I was getting the suit that week. Um, and it didn't come until, like, later in the season so i was like oh my god did i make that up is that actually happening (laughs) it actually happened and i went through the process of you know getting the suit fitted to my body and everything and it was awesome it was i mean unreal like an out-of-body experience it's something that i really didn't expect i mean even not to have in my first season as a series regular which was pretty cool so and how comfortable or uncomfortable was the suit to wear um, you know, it's quite a bit of layers. There's like a wetsuit sort of layer underneath and then there's the 3D printed pieces um, that get sort of Velcroed onto it. And I, I do talk a lot about <laughs> how this suit's kind of heavy. Um, I over-exaggerate a little bit. It's not like super heavy. I know Wole's is like pretty heavy. They did me a great justice. Um, so it's not super heavy. It's a little bit heavy. I think it would be a little bit uncomfortable to wear for super long periods of time so i'm like super grateful to our stunt people who you know wear the suits for us and fight in them for us because they they make it look so easy but i know that it's not um Mm. but not super uncomfortable not so uncomfortable that i don't want to be in it i want to be in it so much and how much of it is you and how much of it is your wonderful stunt team well i actually have not gotten to be in the suit myself this season i have my own suit that i you know obviously have tried on and posted pictures in (laughs) i haven't actually you know filmed in the suit yet so that will be another sort of checklist for me hopefully next season 
but how awesome is that so now you know you're you know f- saving superman uh, you're fighting alongside your on-screen dad so that is cementing your character for amazing things to come you know into se- season three so without giving any spoilers away because i know ndas and you can't say much <laughs> uh, what have we got to expect from the remaining two episodes well, there's only two episodes left, and I feel like they are, you know, really, it's a really big deal for Natalie. I don't really know what I could say that wouldn't <laughs> give something away, to be honest. It's, it's, I think it's a pretty big deal, especially, you know, the last episode. Obviously, episode coming out tonight, or when you guys will see this, yesterday, was, it's going to be a really big deal, and I think definitely the finale is, like, it's super cool. Everything is so cool. And just reading the script and seeing how action packed and everything is, it's it'll be really great to see it fully done and mm-hmm. on screen. And and there's lots of rumors, lots of things going around the internet about, you know, obviously we're gonna get an introduction to the next uh big bad villain. Uh could it be <laughs> Lobo, could it be Brainiac? Literally the internet is going crazy. So I just can't wait to see what we've got in store for se- season three. And season three is obviously uh filming very, very soon. If you had a yeah. say in your storyline, what would you like Natalie? you know, to do in season three, what would you like that story storyline to look like if you had input? I, I mean, obviously I would love for her to sort of start the beginning of a relationship with Lois and I want to see her in the suit more. I mean, I think that suit is so badass to be honest and I just want to be, <laughs> um, I would love to see her sort of come into her own and find herself as a superhero. Um, which I think is really, really awesome. I can't believe I'm talking about myself as a superhero. That's like insane. (laughs) But I'd love to see her just come into her own and, you know, be that strong woman that I know she can be. Mm, And I can't wait for that either because for me, being a dad of girls, I quite like to see, you know, female characters on screen being strong, being self-assured because we have, we don't have many role models for for girls and I think it's great to see and I think what the work that you do in India on the show is fantastic and um, I can't wait for my girls to be a bit older because at the moment there's this sort of focus is isn't really on tv so (laughs) it's more on drawing on walls and Uh and each other so it'd be nice (laughs) to uh it's the creativity overflowing I know I shouldn't stop it um so what's been your (laughs) Your favorite scene to shoot so far? My favorite scene. Hmm. I think it was the scene in episode one where I'm, you know, on the bench and Lois comes up and we have that conversation. I think honestly that was my favorite scene. And it was, I can't remember if it was one of the first days of shooting or not, but it was, it was a really great scene to do. And I'm, you know, it started sort of, her character it was her introduction to everybody and it was really really nice doing that mm. it was my favorite scene and watching it back i was like oh <laughs> to be honest i mean the show has got so much heart it really has and and there was so much anticipation on when it when it got released and and people were concerned that it wasn't gonna do the superman sort of fr- franchise any just justice and the thing I like about it is completely different to anything that's been out there. Um, you yeah. know, you know, from from Smallville to Lois and Clark back in the nineties. Um, but this show is just awesome, and Tyler, I just think, is an awesome Superman. Again, people are unsure, Great. and I think that he brings a lot to the character, and um, you know, he's he's real, and again, very very ground grounded. Um, so, yeah. from your social media, so let's talk about Cass because. Um, you know I've interviewed quite a lot of the cast um, from Jordan to Alex um, and I've got to say they're both so different to each other literally Jordan is so sort of like calm and collective and Alex is like a puppy that's a bit overactive and they're both awesome (laughs) I mean what is what is the cast like off screen is it one big family and who is who is, you know, you know, the Joker and who's the serious one and who's the one that you've got closest to during filming? 
honestly, it it is like one big family, and I'm like, I'm really grateful that they sort of accepted me into that. Because you know, when you go into like a new show and you're the new one, and everyone else has known each other for a year already, it's sort of like, okay, I don't know. <laughs> but everyone was so nice to me and just accepted me in, and I love how close the cast is with each other. It's really great. I mean, I think we all know the funny one. It's Alex. <laughs> Always joking around.、Um, I'd say also the troublemaker definitely gets me into trouble. <laughs> I'm always following along.、Um, the serious one. I might say the serious one is Tyler, just because he's so disciplined and focused, and like really into what he does, and obviously it shows.、Um, honestly, I think we're all. Really close to each other. I, th- I think we're all really close to. <laughs> I know that people are like, "Oh, she's just saying that," but no, I think it's, it's the truth. And it definitely shows on 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 screen. I mean, the cast and crew, I think, do a sterling job. So,、um, when we talk about fans,、uh, just another quick question is: Have you noticed a difference in your social media since joining Superman and Lois? <laughs> yeah, I have.、Um... I, a lot of Superman fans have followed me, which is pretty cool. And now that I have the suit, I think I've gotten a little bit more, which is crazy.、Um, but I, it's great. I love to see the people that message me and are like, "I love the show," and seeing all the edits of everything. I'm like, "This is so cool." <laughs> Bless you. And then,、uh, obviously, how can fans actually follow you on social media?、Uh, they can follow my Instagram. Which is Taylor B B U C K, and my Twitter is just Taylor Buck. Awesome, Taylor, you've been a great guest.、Uh, I can't wait for the next two episodes. I'm so so excited, and then for season three as well.、Uh, look after yourself, stay safe, and、uh, so stay super. Thank you, thank you so much for having me.